But the big question is why uh, is this even going to happen? What's the, what are the big drivers uh, that are making uh, this a point of discussion for us today? Uh, there's a very important uh, Johns Hopkins study, which uh, I'll talk about in a minute, uh, that suggests uh, that this requires serious thinking. NABH, accreditation, uh, JCI, again, a number of issues uh, which are really pushing hospitals uh, towards uh, adopting IT. Caregivers are in tremendous shortage today. Wherever you go, doctors, nurses, physiotherapists, they're in tremendous shortage today. And um, that's, that's something we'll talk about. Patient experience. Uh, patients are less patient today than they were some time back. Mobile health. Uh, it's, it's a new paradigm that's come into play, and it's, uh, it's becoming extremely important. And, and again, finally, we have insurance. Gone again. Um, there was a Johns Hopkins study which uh, covered 40 hospitals and nearly uh, 1 lakh 60,000 patients. This happened over a period of uh, one and a half to two years, and the uh, the um, results that the study threw up were uh, tr truly startling. Uh, I'll. Uh, this is available on the internet, and I would uh, encourage all of you to have a look at this. Um, but I'll just go into some of the salient points that uh, they spoke about. They were categorical uh, when they said that paperless hospitals are paperless hospitals are uh, better for uh, uh, for the industry. In fact, uh, they said that. Um, there is a 15 percent there is a there is a 15 percent improvement in the odds that a patient would die while he was hospitalized um, if the hospital was paperless in some departments the risk of death while uh, the patient was admitted came down by nine to 55 percent I mean 55 percent is the decrease in the odds of a fatality during an admission. And uh, decision support systems were associated with a 21% decrease in the odds that a patient would develop complications. And, and hospitals with the highest technology scores showed significantly lower patient costs. Now this is, this is different. This is not talking about the, the medical aspects of IT, but it's also talking about the financial and the practical aspects of running IT. And finally, there were new handheld devices uh, which are coming into the market almost daily, which is making it completely different for uh, users to interact with the system and make things far, far better. Now, um, we spoke about uh, the patient experience. Uh, patients today um, are fast coming into the system. We had a small percentage of our population which was able to afford health care in the past. Today, a much larger percentage of our population is able to afford health care. The, the group that is going into the middle classes is increasing and is going to increase daily. Over the next five years, we're going to probably see close to a 50% increase in our percentage of uh, people in the middle class back bracket. Now, all of these people who might not have sought organized health care in the past are coming in. The minister was talking to us about the Kalangir Karpir Titam, and that, that truly has been a revolution. It has brought so many people into uh, hospitals. These people might have gone to the, you know, the Nato Vaitir or the local, uh, the local person, but now they're into hospitals, and this is where uh, the real demand for hospitals is coming from. I mean, we, we speak about a lot of, uh, in a lot of events, we say that India needs 60,000 hospitals. We have 15. So how are we really going to justify this 400% increase? And, and some hospitals, they say that, but we're already running only at 50 or 60% occupancy. So where is this real need going to be for 60,000 hospitals or 75,000 hospitals? And the answer really is, in the past, less than 25% of the Indian population went to hospitals. Or they didn't go whenever they needed to go. They only went for emergencies or very severe ailments. But now they're going. 
and they will, that will increase very, uh, very significantly over the years. And when that happens, the patient is going to be a lot more demanding of services. So the patient experience is extremely important today. Uh, the patient wants uh, to feel uh, treated well and uh, there are a number of factors which actually determine what the patient, how the patient experience is, de is, is derived. And uh, some, of the, some of the factors that affect a patient's experience is uh, how the admission process is handled, uh, how treatment and care is handled, how the uh, facilities are handled, and how discharge is handled. There are other factors, of course, but these are the critical factors. Now, in all of these factors, you will see that um, uh, automation, not only in the form of IT, but in the form of electronic equipment coming in, uh, in a number of places, automation makes a significant improvement. So the patient experience is enhanced. The patient is um, more willing to come back, and uh, the patient's wellness, therefore, uh, is enhanced. Now, um, healthcare broadly today is really run by the doctor. The doctor is 10% or 15% of the workforce, but the doctor is, is the heart around which the, uh, the hospital works. So unless there is a benefit for the physician, unless the physician decides that I want this system and the system is good, it's very difficult to get IT into a hospital. So our approach has always got to be, how can we make a difference to the physician? And why is a physician actually going to support IT? Now, we, we, we saw the Johns Hopkins study and uh, those, those numbers were really very, very uh, significant. But um, how does that happen? How does uh, the, uh, the security for the patient go up by these 15% numbers and these 50% numbers? One of the simplest reasons why that happens is because the patient's complete record is available to a physician when they have to make a decision. Many times a physician has to make a decision with incomplete data. When you're working with a paper file, the file may be somewhere else. But you have to take a decision now. And you're doing that with incomplete data, with electronic medical records. If you have access to a terminal, you have the entire patient record. Now, this is the single biggest reason why IT has to come in. I mean, Mr. Obama is not doing this purely as a, you know, uh, a ploy to get more vo uh, votes. IT is about the only industry left in the world. Almost every other industry has, absor has absorbed uh, uh, IT. I'm sorry, healthcare is the only industry left um, which has not really used IT to help improve its efficiencies. And, and when you can make huge improvements, huge differences to the quality of care that we offer our patients by adopting very simple methods, then it's really a no option situation. It's a question of how quickly can we go there. Now we have medication alerts, protocol based treatments and flow sheets. There was a study in the NHS where uh, they had decision support uh, systems installed in hospitals. They looked at how physicians actually changed their prescribing patterns, how they actually modified their treatment plans. And the, the computer will suggest so many things to the patient, uh, to the physician, but the physician ignored it 93% of the time during that study. But 7% of the time, the physician made a modification to their care plan. They made some change to their prescription, they made some change to their care plan because of an alert from the computer. Again, this is where enhanced patient safety comes in. Without an IT system, without uh, a system which enables a physician to make a better decision, that 7% might have resulted in a different outcome uh, for the patient. CPOE, Computerized Provider Order Entry. 
being able to make a request for lab tests, being able to make a request for medicines by the doctor at the time when he is fully engaged with that patient's file makes a tremendous difference to the patient. When he has got his entire mind on that patient, he's just seen the patient, he's got his mind on that patient, and he is able to enter something which doesn't have to be transcribed, which doesn't have to be spoken about over the phone to somebody else. A good CPOE system, very simple, but a good CPOE system is a fantastic improvement to the entire hospital's function. Again, lots more statistics. 80% of, uh, of a doctor's decision uh, regarding a patient is made on the basis of diagnostic results. So uh, again, a pa patient file, if you look at the patient file, sometimes it's 40, 50 pages, and uh, about 75 to 80% of that is uh, diagnostic results. In a good paperless hospital, everybody has access to that file as soon as they get on to a terminal. Uh, this, this last one, freedom to work remotely, uh, this is interesting even from the admin uh, perspective. Today recruitment is, is madness. If you're trying to recruit somebody, it's so difficult. Whichever industry you're in, you can't get doctors, you can't get engineers, you can't get anybody. But if you offer people freedom to work from their homes, it immediately improves your ability to recruit quality people. This is uh, you know, it, it might appear that it's not directly a medical benefit, but for a hospital it means that instead of having two or three physicians, they can have four or five. Again, it works on enhancing the patient's safety. Now, we're talking about how is uh, the, you know, the patient going to be benefited. Many of these things that we've spoken about impact the patient. But the doctor's experience, really, when they're using a prescription, uh, any prescription, or when they're using uh, uh, an ordering sheet, is so much better. If you look at a doctor, the, the calls that they get from their patients, 40% of the calls that they get from their patients are related to medicines not being available. Doctor, you've prescribed for paracetamol, but they have sat it on. Can I take it? You know, it's a waste of the doctor's time. It's a waste of the patient's time, it's a waste of the pharmacist's time. It's a national waste. But if you can have a system which eliminates that, then it's 40% of everybody's time which is being saved. And that's what IT does. Okay, these are the most common tasks performed by a nurse. I'll go to the next slide and I'll come back to this. This again is um, a description of how a nurse spends her time. She spends about 30% of her time in the patient room. She spends about 40% of her time in the nurse station. And when she's in the nurse station, she's really doing follow-up work. She's calling. She's making sure that the doctor's orders are being uh, observed. And the, the amount of time she spends on care coordination uh, is about 21%. She spends about 35% of her time on documentation. Now we'll go back to this slide, which talks about what she does. She's locating patient charts. She's tracking down results. She's transcribing instructions. Doctor said something, and she's putting it down on paper, often with some miscommunication in the process. She's finding the appropriate forms, and she's answering phone calls, and she's calling the pharmacy. Now, once a hospital becomes paperless or e-enabled, where three people perform the same task, the doctor prescribing something, the nurse transcribing it, and the pharmacist putting it into uh, the pharmacy system. Three people have done the same thing. When you have a good system, that's down from three to one. The doctor makes the entry, and the pharmacist just dispenses the medicines. There's no error in the system, and you've reduced about 40% of the work that the hospital is doing for that patient. I mean, it's, it's all time and money spent for a patient, for a patient's care. So when we're doing this, when we're bringing it in, this is what we're doing. We're completely enhancing the efficiency of the hospital. Now, for a nurse, one of the biggest problems a nurse faces is in understanding the doctor's handwriting. 